Hello and welcome back to round three of season eight, week one, Grand Arena Championships for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. I am 2-0 so far and we're going into the third battle against a foe named Flanders. So I hope it goes oakley doakley for me. Let's see how we match up. You can see that I have more of the green on my side so I have an advantage but let's dig in deeper to the stats and see where we stand. You can see as far as Grand Arena goes I have a clear advantage on all of the different metrics offensive defensive undersized defense but when we look at the analysis of our rosters you can see he has a 300,000 GP advantage overall as well as an advantage a slight advantage on top 65. I do have eight more Zetas in him and a significant speed advantage. I have about twice as many six stop mods as he does and a lot more speed on my mods. Looking at relics, we're fairly even. I've got a slight advantage on the lower end of relics and he has the advantage on the higher end. So let's look at the board. He has already attacked. Let's see how he did against my defense. Up top, you can see he was able to one shot my Poggle, Asajj and B2 group, my First Order, he did take four tries on my Mother Talzin Zombie and Acolyte Cheese team, but he was able to get through my Basila first time. I'm a little surprised that he took so many attempts for the uh, Night Sisters, but I'm happy about it. You can see on the bottom, he was not able to clear my Malak. I took my Malak back off of on offense and back to defense in hopes of getting this hold, actually. And then he struggled with my Newt as well. You can see he didn't get through my ships. I noticed in his GAC history that he runs a kind of wonky fleet and so I put my negotiator on defense in hopes of getting a hold here as well and it did work out for me so that's super exciting he didn't get to my back so far nobody has on defense today I have a nice sister team to go after a first order team a pretty normal Karth, and then you can see down there on the bottom a Bosk led bounty hunters when we look at what he set down on the bottom on defense, he put a Django and Boba, a Palpatine trio team almost, and then a Saws with Ness. So I don't feel like any of his defenses are really scary. I think he might have kept something uh, good in the back because he struggled so much on my defenses. So I am not gonna pull any punches though in this front section. I'm gonna go ahead and use some good squads because I kept enough on offense that uh, even if he kept good stuff in the back I have counters for them. Looking at this first battle I was still trying to get that feat to get the Rolo portrait so I went in with my troopers and with Snow Trooper to try and get this uh, Django Fett team down. Uh, it was definitely a mistake. Um, when I'm my troopers aren't very good anyway when I do run them for threes, I tend to like Veers, Stark, and Range Trooper. I just feel like the synergy is better in terms of, for my particular team, getting buffs up quick and taking somebody down fast, even though Snow hits harder in the end. Um, this is the second time I've tried to do this and failed both times. So, it is the last day, though, that I could get that feat. So I, what I decided to do was take another group in there to get it done and what I came up with was I'm going to go with CLS lead and then 3PO and R2. I don't use 3PO really on threes unless I'm doing the um, machine gun Leia. And R2 is on my JTR squad usually. But I figured I could swap in a different resistance for that if I needed to use her. And you can see I'm just not sure even how to do this. Never played this team obviously. And I realized pretty quickly that I could just use R2 to control and use CLS to do all the damage. Um, so I probably should have just started with this squad to begin with, uh, but I did really want to get that feat, uh, and it was my last opportunity to do it. So only 33 banners. I've already dropped the battle. I'm not worried about that, though, because I saw that he was only able to clear one of my... Um, zones so I'm gonna go out there and collect that make sure I got it yes very nice I, I'm not a huge lover of the portraits or anything but anytime you can get a feat um, that easily without going out of your way too much is I think a good thing 
Now, my initial plan was gonna be for CLS against this Palpatine, so I decide I'm gonna still bring in Chewie and Han. I'll just give them a different Rebels lead. And so I realized, uh, since I already use C-3PO, I'm probably not gonna do the Machine Gun Leia, so I have Akbar available. My Akbar is only gear 11, and I don't really care about that. Chewie and Han are gonna do all the work. Akbar is just gonna give them a little speed up. And there we go. Palpatine's already gone. Decided to try and get a stun on Scion and it doesn't work. So instead I stun Nihilus, I switch back to Scion and take him out. And then just a matter of uh, one more hit on Nihilus to kick him out. So full banners there, even without bringing CLS. So that was nice. And I just have this Asajj, Talia, and Nest to go. And my opponent had decent geos. He tended to keep his geos on offense. So I, but I still wasn't sure. So what I decided to do was I wanted to bring in my Nihilus to take out Nest. But what I realized is I didn't need to use Treya for this. So I went with Vader, Scion, and Nihilus to still have the synergy with the Sith and still have my Annihilate available for Nest. Uh, but still keep Treya in the background just in case those Geos are there and I could always put Treya with a few other tanks to hopefully get through a Geos team if, if they had one. Um, I was hoping that would work and I wasn't actually too worried about um, Asajj or Talia, Talia, however we pronounce it. At this point I'm just going through the motions hitting these Night Sisters, waiting for my Annihilate to come up. And you can see Asajj went down really fast. I've... Taking him out pretty quickly. I get Hell by Hatred up. And I've just got one more, one more turn to get the Annihilate. I almost get Ness down without it. Uh, I was thinking maybe I would actually just kill her off without needing it but there there it is so I pop that off only a 51 but I'm able to save my Treya in case I need her for geos and still expose the back so let's see what he put for me back there and he left me a bunch of junk so I had kept a lot more for offense than I needed so here I'm deciding what do I want to take for all these squads I kind of reshuffled my thinking and so I decide I'm gonna go with my Padme squad here against their Night Sisters. Kind of my most tried and true counter I have for that. I love the fact that you have so much protection up that the plague doesn't stick and you have so much damage with uh, Anakin that you're able to take them down really quickly. So I've got Daka low. I decide I'm gonna leave her low and see if I can take out Talzin a couple times. There's one, there's two, and now Daka is down and won't revive. So that, that worked out really well. Here I'm just uh, waiting to get that final kill on Talzin. And there we have it. So worked exactly the way it should. 52 banners, I'll take that. Now I have um, this crew squad I'm gonna go against and I'm gonna take JTR and I used R2 already. So I'm looking at my resistance, trying to decide which resistance do I wanna bring in. I was deciding between um, Stick Ray, Resistance Trooper and Finn. And in the end, I decided that I was gonna go with Resistance Trooper. And the reason I made that call was his ability to strip off buffs. I figured it would be good to be able to strip off counter chance from OG Kylo. So I wave away crew there. I'm gonna take first order officer out first so that he can't get a bunch of turn meter. I was really, really tempted to take Stick Ray because she just hits harder, but their resistance trooper not doing a bad job either. Here I'm avoiding OG Kylo until I can do that and again, perfect example why I brought Trooper is to get rid of those buffs. I wave him down so see if I can get 
uh, healing immunity on him, which I did, so I decided I'm going to take out OG Kylo first. And it's just a matter of time to whittle that health down. Uh, here I'm going to go ahead and wave off crew so he doesn't get a two-term stun off on me. And call in B2, and there we go. I'm surprised he didn't go down already, but we get the Illuminated Destiny off, and he goes down. And now it's just a matter of taking out crew. And we're in total control, which is always nice. So this makes me think about maybe taking B, maybe taking R2 off this squad once in a while if I need to. We're left with our Bosk bounty hunters and our Karth. So against Bosk, I actually decided to take my Revan squad, which honestly was probably a mistake. Um, I mean, it didn't end up being a mistake because my Revan um, characters here are all like R2, R4, R5. Uh, way over geared, but the reality is that Bosk in and of himself can be a soft corn a Boss can be a soft counter to Darth Revan um, If he's modded right and has the right kind of uh, Accompanying people with him, but in this case 53 and we got Karth here honestly this is way overkill. I didn't need to bring Jedi Nev Revan in here, but I already had mapped out what I needed for the other squads. I had way too much on offense, honestly, for what he had left me. So just turned out this is the squad that was available. So I decided to go ahead and use it. Taking out mission first. And then Zalbar is gonna be a pain and taunt like he always is. So we'll take him out, and we're just left with Karth, Karth, and there he goes. So a perfect 56, and that is gone. Now I told you, my opponent runs some funky fleets, and you can see he left his mace back there. Uh, you can tell it's not his negotiator because it doesn't have the little accompanying ships. So in the back here, I decide I'm going to go ahead and take my Geos versus his um, Rogue One. And this took longer than I thought it would. Uh, I got Jin down right away, so she couldn't revive. But then I was gonna get through Chiru first, but Baze taunted, of course. So then I decided, you know what, let's just burn through Baze. He's low level, I think gear 11. Uh, but when you only have three of the Geos, it just, does, it just takes longer. And I thought he would get out there quick, but true, gave him some more. I decided to hold my big uh, hit until Spy was in stealth. So I'm not worried at any point of this. It's just a matter of how long is it gonna take to take him down. And finally, Baze goes down and Chiru as well. So a perfect 54 is what I like to see. We've got three squads left. Uh, next, I'm going to go ahead and take out their Akbar and Wedge. And because I had it available, I decided to take my boss with Django and Boba. I was initially going to use this squad on his Night Sister team, but because he set, didn't send any meta teams on the back, I was able to use Padme there. So I had these guys available, and he doesn't have a taunt, and it doesn't matter anyway. Boss is just going to eat up all the de damage, and my Fett brothers here, I guess Fett son and dad combo, uh, are just going to chew through these guys. So there we go, a cool 54. Next we have the Ewoks, and I kept Ness on offense. What's shocking to me is I was able to keep a lot on offense and I was still able to hold him to only one zone cleared. Um, so that did definitely surprise me. I put this battle on fast forward again just because uh, I've done this so often. I'm sure you're tired of watching it. 
just as I'm tired of doing it, but I'm not tired of getting these Ewoks down quickly and getting 55 banners. That is always a welcome sight. So our last battle here against the Phoenix, I decide I'm just gonna throw kind of the best characters I have left, even though they're not an actual squad. So I throw my Treya, because I kept her, and I'm gonna throw my Thrawn, because I have him, and Wampa, because I probably could have soloed these Phoenix with Wampa, but again, I don't, I, there's no need. I've already won at this point. Um, I don't know what I'm doing here again. It's such a weird squad. I, I should have fractured Zeb and isolated Kanan, and I did it the opposite way. But again, it doesn't, doesn't matter. My team is so much uh, overpowered compared to theirs that it's just a matter of how long is it going to take me to take them down. I don't know if next week or next rounds of opponents I need to switch up my defense a little bit to make it more difficult and because I don't need to save as much for offense or if I should say hey I'm able to hold people in fact every three every, none of my opponents in the three rounds saw my back zone for characters so maybe what I'm putting on defense is enough and I have all of this extra for offense um, because I put my, my negotiator on defense I've got my Millennium Falcon fleet here for offense. So I decide I'm gonna put the Phantom and Ghost and Cassian. I'll go in with one reinforcement short because I don't think his fleet poses any uh, threat to me. I'm actually gonna speed this battle up as well because uh, I don't know, I find fleets kind of boring, especially when I'm winning. If I'm losing, then they're just annoying. Uh, you can see I've already taken out one of his ships and he's gonna bring in Phantom. He has a, a really funky lineup. So even the the fleet he keeps for his offense is kind of a funky lineup as well. So I had a feeling that I had the advantage on ships for sure here and was happy that I was able to exploit it. Here we have a nice uh, AOE and one more hit and we're done. 65 is always a welcome sight. So there you have it. Cleared his board with a 2455. He was only able to clear one of my zones. 3 0 for the first week. Happy about that. Thank you, Flanders, for the match. And thank you, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you in a couple days for the next week of matches.